2024, July 7th, garden walk. We're going to be getting our guide with us in a minute. This is like the new developments. That's a property line thing and I'm going to work around and a piece of fence that has to be put back up. It's never even gotten finished and it's already fallen down once. But this whole back here is turning into a, or this is a side yard, the junkyard. Turning into like things like this. It's all kindling in this box. If you might call it. And of course some sheet metal roofing stuff. This is that uh, yellow forsythia that blooms in February. And of course you know, well you may not know, the buffalo gourd. And then this is the wild grapes. They don't bear much, but they grow all over the place. I wish I could have something that would bear a little more. Because I like don't get any grapes hardly. I haven't, I don't think I've found any grapes in 10 years. Pallets, free and worth every penny of it. This is just the front fence to screen off the junkyard so I can put all these kind of things like plywood in here. That's that. That's a post out off of my uh, big cedar tree that got blown down a few months ago. stuff everywhere. That's not even mine. I gave it away and it came back and he's working on it here. And some stuff on its way to being put into the storage shed and my grand front entry. This cart, I might be able to air those wheels up and Make a, you can make a little lightweight steel frame out of stuff like uh, bed frame material. Somewhere over here we should have, I brought some lumber from them tearing down a house. And I don't know where my gangsters put it. I, oh, there it is, yeah, okay actually right where I would have put it, so how about that? These guys, like, it's kind of, they come over and eat my food and charge me a few bucks and do a few things that involve bending and lifting that I can't do. This is some, of the, this is that salvage lumber. We'll make things out of this. I, you don't, Getting yeah, that's a big cedar post over there, just sitting and drying. Sometimes not getting around to doing anything can be good because you'll find that, like, oh, I need a dry piece of cedar, say, and then you look and, whoa. <laughs> All these piled up over here. These are all dry. These have been here for years, haven't they? Forgot all about them. We'll take another route around. That's the neighbor's Johnson grass. It's, uh, it's getting pretty old, too. He's just not up to it anymore. I dissed it for him this spring, but he never did plant anything. He's got a shredder and he went over it with his uh, spreaders. I don't know why he's got a well, but he doesn't irrigate. And I don't understand why he doesn't plow like, you know, two passes with the tractor, you know, like a 16 foot strip all the way along in front of the house over there where the hoses will easily reach from the well. I mean, that would be Drake style. If I'm not going to do the rest of it, I'll just put the shredder on and mow it all down. 
This is the stump of that tree. It split right in half. And all came down all over the place. These are native four o'clocks. And they they would like to be watered. They'll even green up if they get watered. They got a nice uh, purple flower on them. I, I think I've gotten some shots of them in bloom on some of the garden walks that I remember when. This low area here in the middle, for some reason, this idiot that the neighbor hired to mow the lawn came and went right through this flower bed and mowed. You can see this about 18 foot strip out of my flower bed. What's he doing? So basically, his side is neglected. Look at those hoppers. That was one thing I was going to catch. They've eaten just everything. Just... There's some native sunflowers over there. I mean, you can't grow anything else. You see all these leaves on the ground. That's from the hoppers eating them off of the tree, I guess. There he is. Nasty little things. I guess they're theoretically one of God's creatures and all that good stuff, but I mean, really. Look at them. It sounds like it's raining sometimes from these things. This is not really a plague of locusts, though. I mean, this is just a little bit of a hoppery year, but... They go and they just mow everything. I, I wondered why my... Sweet potato wasn't growing well. They leveled it. That's what happened to that thing. This dryer was going to be... Uh, if I can figure out the damn wiring... I don't, know what the, I don't even know how you're supposed to get at the motor. It's way buried in there. I wanted to make it a... a spin and no heat. And this was going to be my outside stove if I ever get it together. It's like I could make a pizza when it's 105 degrees out, but I ain't gonna run the oven in the house. I don't usually run the air conditioner, so there you are. But I started getting sick last year. My doctor gave me an air conditioner. Uh, at our guide. Mr. P! Now we got it. Your fans want to see you. There he is, Mr. P. He's a good P, huh? You bet he is. That's some milk that my buddy got dumpster diving. Questionable stuff, but he can drink it. He won't get sick. These are Mexican lilacs. They've been having a hard time. We put them in two years ago. Out of some little divisions. And I got them established with this Johnson grass fought them and the drought and the hoppers. Well, I don't know if the hoppers ate them. But everything happens here. Just a tremendous gobbling. Here's a... a the uh, trumpet vine. That's what the flowers look like. Hummingbirds eat these. Well, eat, they eat from them. <coughs> <coughs> and these are these are little uh, offsets from the root system of the big ones. You can see I can dig those up. Now these. If you wanted them, and you got that, you could get that Proton Mail address. And I got to dig through a whole bunch of spam from women with, or I mean, it's supposedly it's women, you know, with these OnlyFans pages. Look at the hoppers go up when he walks through there. I don't know if I got, I maybe didn't get up quick enough this tarp is to just choke out some weed growth. 
where that lawnmower chair is. You can see there's a couple of uh, watermelons and you can look over here and all through here and this was all the squashes. They got that, I think it's fusarian wilt. <clears throat> a whole bunch of them just bam, dead. Shriveled up and died. Around here shriveling up and dying is like, well, that's normal. That's, most things do. This is my super daisies. They might be butter daisies. They're, I don't know what they are, but they get two or three feet tall. And there's one of them that's just, I guess that's a starting bloom. It makes a little yellow uh, daisy flower. This is my East LA look mower that's the various stuff. A couple wheels went on to other mowers and the motor has gone to some other mower and like that. And this is compost. Everybody's just read these articles about how to compost. You must do this, you must do that. This is weed compost over here. <coughs> This is like Queen Anne's lace and Johnson grass and nasty stuff like that. And it'll die. Most of the seeds will be dead in there underneath. And I can put it out like if the potatoes would have lived. I was going to build a, a mound of this stuff around the potatoes. And what you do is you... You take this surface junk off and you get the more finished compost out of the center of the pile. And then, um, uh, that doesn't have too many weed seeds in it. And once the potatoes are really growing good, they don't need a lot of water, so you kind of just you soak the heck out of them once a week or something, even in 100 degree weather. You know, I mean, you just, you know, there's a lot of variables, but it's that kind of a time. And and then uh, you're going to have um, uh, some weeds coming up, but mostly it'll be the potatoes. And they, they form really well in a lot of mulch. Across, that's the back street back there. That house somebody used to live in it ten years ago. Those are all, there's a bunch of them around town, and they they run down like that, but you could move into it and fix a few things, you know, get the toilet to flush and like that. This is the brush pile. It's, it's had, oh, I don't know what, 10 pickup trucks full of stuff thrown onto here, just thrown on and left there, and you can see that there's like only one left. The last few yards goes really slow, but <clears throat> a pile like that, if you go like 18 feet tall, you can easily lose like 9 feet in the first year. It just goes halfway down because it's damp down there. Yeah, it's damp after it gets hot. And even like in Northern California, that's where I, where I did that. Here's some watermelons. Now they were supposedly could get the fusarian wilt, but they didn't. So there's that. The plastic is just just something that was laying around, so I put it here. I wanted to suffocate some weeds. The technique is mow, pull like Johnson grass and stuff, mow get it down, put tarps over it, and, and let everything die. This is corn that didn't make it over here. Just nothing, nothing with that. Our guide is out here in the, these are the wild carrot plants if you look right there. That's that 
Queen Anne's lace. A burr, but not a terrible, terrible burr. This <clears throat> piece checking everything out for us. We've done a little cleaning up in here. But I've been kind of putting the firewood over here and then that thing that looks like a watering trough. It's supposed to have drains, but it's not draining. That's going to just get stuff thrown in and then I'll take the riding mower and drag it. Um, gets me out of trying to lift and carry. There's a bunch more of that Queen Anne's lace. Stuff is pretty when it flowers. The thing to do, if you want to have like a nice garden, is to let it flower and then pull it all up and compost it before it sets seeds. And you might be able to have something other than the Queen Anne's lace. If you let it go, you just get big fields of it. And there's like a balance between what grows well here, what grows well there. The riding mower has been in here, that's why this is cleared up as much as it is. And the buffalo gourds. I wish these things would make something I could eat. It's, it's kind of a cool plant, but it's just useless. And it, the squirrels like to eat them, and, and they, they, they take these gourds around and do whatever they do with them. And, and then, um, And then you see them popping up in various places. It's perennial, so you let them get established and you got a lot of digging to do or something. That, I think, is a choya. It's a cactus that has purple flowers on it. See Mr. Hopper is up on the top of that thing. It's everywhere. Well, if you hear these, this singing, that's cicadas. If you don't have them in your area, you don't know what what are those things going. Da -da 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 -da. This little thing looks kind of like a cicada, or well, it's like a cicada. It is a cicada. Looks like a grasshopper, kind of. They're sort of more kind of a rounded thing with big eyes in the front and. Um, and they're rubbing their legs, making noise. And there's one of them lives, I think it's 17 years in the ground as a grub kind of thing. And it comes up and sings like this and finds a girl cicada. And, and then she lays the eggs. And, and then the, the new cicadas crawl down and dig into the ground and they're and they live there for 17 years. Very strange. They don't hurt anything, so... I don't know, some people, how do you get rid of cicadas? What the... You got some kind of strange thing going on in people's head. I've even seen instructions for how to get rid of earthworms. Why in the world would you want to get rid of earthworms? You don't know anything about organic gardening, I guess. Any concept of natural anything. These are red onions. You can't hardly tell because of the coastal Bermuda grass growing there. The the uh, uh, hoppers took these. They were just merciless with the foliage of those onions. But you can see, contrary to what you'd think, there's a nice little red onion down there. It was three bucks for a bunch of them, and I put this raised bed thing. My friend Billy insisted on giving me the raised bed thing. I had to take it, and then I got some... I wanted to buy straw, and that's what I thought I was getting, and then my buddy brings it over, and actually it was... There was some straw on the top, but it was topsoil. Well, it's really good topsoil, and he, he brought it over and he put it there next to the vegetable garden, and, 
And now it's all full of coastal bermuda grass. But, you know, here's the newly cleaned out greenhouse. This here was supposed to be seedlings. There was like 10, 12 flats here. The hoppers just ate everything to the ground. This is Gallardia, but I don't know if any of them are going to come up or survive the hoppers once they do. This is what's left of the succulents. This one with the little mini jelly beans guy. Seems to be the one that wants to live the most of any of them. Those back in there are some blackberries. That's some rather arc. It's a bears on first year wood as well as second. I guess it as well as second. So anyway, it's you get your blackberries sooner. So I'm hoping to keep those alive and get them into the ground and have them spread all over. I've tried to take these like more like native blackberries, dig them out, cut a bunch of foliage off to so they wouldn't dry out and they'd dry out and die anyway. Got the crown of the plant but uh, they don't recover from the root damage. The easiest way by the way with the Blackberries, raspberries, all those dudes. Take like a gallon can or something. Put it on a piece of wood or whatever so it doesn't root in the ground. Or have a tree root come up into it from underneath. They'll do that. And you put it next to your blackberry and then you take the cane of the blackberry or I did it with the thornless boysenberries, but it's all, I think it's all the same difference and you stick it into the gallon can where it goes kind of like the Loch Ness Monster goes down and then it comes back up again and then uh, this is my this is a Navajo blackberry planted this spring out of a one gallon can So then your blackberry shoot is buried in the middle of the of the cane twig branch, whatever you wanted to call it. And uh, the tip is sticking out. And then you uh, you might use a rock or a piece of a brick or something. And then um, he already is ready to go inside. I guess there's not much senior hoppers. And then just uh, you water it and it'll send out roots and it won't die off. You do the same thing with a honeysuckle. Uh, the vine's not going to die off because it's got. Uh, still attached to the parent plant. And then when the gallon can gets a bunch of roots in it, you can just cut it off and take it out and you've got your new plant. And I guess that does it for us for today. Let me know if you want uh, one of those little um, trumpet vines. The postage is kind of ugly, but the plants are free.